Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's session. I hope <clears throat> you're all able to join the quiz. And uh, sorry, I got delayed, uh, but better late than never. So let's take up the questions on anatomy and uh, play the quiz. Are you ready for the game? I wish that uh, you're all in on the quiz. Great. That's wonderful. <clears throat> Good to see 17 players 
in the game. Let's make the great start. Keep punching your answers, doctor. Which is not a retroperitoneal structure? Which is not a retroperitoneal structure? Punch your answers, doctor. Which is not a retroperitoneal structure? So there are a clear list of peritoneal, retroperitoneal structures. Very good. Seven of you are correct. You should remember, and we have Ishwar on the top, trailed by Jayashree, Muhurat, Mili, and Namra. So you should remember what are all the list of retroperitoneal structures. A common mnemonic is sad pucker. Yes, for suprarenal glands, iota, IVC, second part, which is ascending part, and fourth part, descending part. So, second through fourth parts of duodenum, pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure, but the tail of the pancreas is not a retroperitoneal structure. Ureters, colon, descending and ascending colon and the kidneys and the thoracic part of the esophagus and rectum, partially the rectum. They're all considered to be the retroperitoneal structures, the list of them. You should be 100% sure to remember for the tomorrow's exam. Now, doctor, which is the derivative of fetal umbilical vein? Punch your answers. Fetal umbilical vein, which is not, I mean, which is a derivative of fetal umbilical vein. Yes. Very good, very good. So all the embryological structures, you have to be 100% sure. Excellent, 14 of you are right. So that brings Jayashree to the top, being fastest to punch the correct answer. And Sesha climbs almost 12 places. What is the frequency of basic electrical rhythm in the duodenum? In the duodenum, what is the frequency of basic electric rhythm? So this morning anatomy quiz should inspire you. What a wonderful morning we are having today in Hyderabad. So it should inspire you to study. Afternoon, two o'clock, we have uh, the physiology quiz. Please don't forget. So very good. Six of you are absolutely right. And that bring, keeps Jayashree on the top and them is ascending up very fast. So you should know a little bit of numeric here. Stomach three waves per minute. Duodenum is 12 waves per minute. Ilium is eight to nine waves per minute is what you have to emphatically remember. Largest number of complex cells in the small intestine, where do you see largest number of goblet cells in the small intestine? Anatomy is always enigmatic if you don't read at least once. So there are about 2000 points in anatomy. So you have all that in the online MBBS.com video library. Just you need to go back and do the revision. So very good. Six of you are right. Ilium is the place where you have largest number of the goblet cells in the small intestine is what you need to remember. And that keeps Jayashree on the top and Ishwar 
Namra ascending up. Now, doctor, nutcracker syndrome. It is the compression of wood structure between superior mesenteric artery and the iota. Boom, boom, boom. Nutcracker syndrome is the compression of wood structure between superior mesenteric artery and iota. Straight away, the same question is going to come in the tomorrow's AIMS and NEED PG exam. Very good. It looks like today one of you is going to crack the jackpot. 15 out of 15 correctly and take over the 40,000 rupees worth of online MBBS.com video library, mock tests, notes, everything, right? So, very good. Vaibhav Agarwal is the highest climber and Jayashri on the top followed by Namra and them. Very good. So, Doc, you should remember, it is the compression of the left renal vein between supermesentric artery and the iota, which is basically called nutcracker syndrome. There's an abdominal pain, gross hematuria because of the rupture of the thin-walled renal varicosities. There is a development of hematuria once there is a development of nutcracker syndrome is what you need to remember. Superior mesenteric artery syndrome occurs when the superior mesenteric artery and iota compress. Which part of the duodenum is a very important question? Punch. Which part of the duodenum? A relatively easy question. Very good. Six of you are absolutely right. Six of you are absolutely right. And that brings Abhi to the top. Very good. Abhi made a hat trick with three streaks, with three correct answers in a row. Excellent. So, doctor, please remember. In superior mesenteric artery syndrome, typically there is an ischemia to the bowel. So that is the reason patient will have, after eating food, there is an increased blood flow expected. But if it doesn't happen, that leads to ischemia. So postprandial pain is the classical feature. There will be intermittent intestinal obstruction syndrome symptoms. The supermesentric artery and iota, they compress the third portion of the duodenum, which is the transverse portion. And uh, if somebody is extremely malnourished, very low body weight, then that lead to diminished mesenteric fat which lead to development of superior mesenteric syndrome is what you need to remember. So doctor, after this quiz is over, if you want all these questions and explanatory answers PDF, please give a call or WhatsApp to 9000868356, our helpline, and you will be able to get the PDF of uh, all these uh, questions and explanatory answers. So, doctor, now comes the next question. Rectosigmoid junction, it's called a watershed area. It gets its arterial supply from two arteries. What are the two arteries you are going to tell me? Punch, punch, punch. <clears throat> Rectosigmoid junction, the watershed area. Very good. 
you need to be very fast in punching. Tomorrow's exam also demands the same. It is the inferior mesenteric artery and the superior rectal artery. The zone of confluence of these two vascular territories is what you see with rectus sigmoid is what you need to remember. <clears throat> That makes them to be in the second position. Muhurath is the fastest climber. Very good. So you should remember that. The rectus sigmoid junction is the last sigmoid arterial branch from the inferior mesenteric artery and superior rectal artery. They both combine together and provide the blood supply is what you need to remember. <clears throat> One more area of arterial watershed zone is the splenic flexion, where the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery, it is the zone of confluence, is what you should remember. Superior mesenteric artery arises at what anatomical level? Punch your answer up. Superior mesenteric artery. So you should know each of the various arteries which are the branches of the iota at what level do they arise is a favorite uh, pastime question of the examiner very good very good boom 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 that keeps you on very good eight of you are absolutely right and the most wrongly thought answer was l3 yeah, the numericals you can never guess. You need to know them. So that makes Nick to become the highest climber. Very good. So doctor, please don't forget. The artery of the foregut is celiac artery. The artery of midgut is superior mesenteric artery and the hindgut is inferior mesenteric artery. The foregut and midgut get their parasympathetic innervation from the vagus. Hindgut gets it from pelvis, pelvic splanchnic nerves. T12 L1 is the vertebral level at which the celiac artery will be arising. SMA at L1 level, hindgut is at L3 level. That's what you need to basically remember. So, doctor. The next question. Branches of the celiac artery directly from the celiac artery include what? All these are included except branches of the celiac trunk include all except I'm talking about the direct branch of the celiac trunk. Punch. Very good. 11 of you are right. I'm so proud of you. You should remember. Very good. Abhi is on the top. Shweta is the highest climber in this round. Very good. So, doctor, you should remember. <clears throat> Common hepatic, splenic, and left gastric are the branches directly from celiac trunk. Whereas the right gastric artery usually is the branch from the hepatic artery. Hepatic artery. That's the point you should appreciate. Abhi maza aega. Isko jo bhi jawab dega. O hai. Kaun banega PG pati. So the liver, if you look at histology, it is being divided into zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So the pericentral vein zone, which is called centrilobular zone. What is the speciality of it? Whoever answers it is really ready for the exam. I can vouch for you. Oh, no, doctor, no, doctor, I can't accept this. Zero could answer correctly, but I want to tell you, I'm going to leave you the literature and uh, 
please be part of our telegram group where we will be also posting you your scores and if you want the pdf of this explanatory answers please call our helpline 9000868356 and i also want to tell all of you doctor every day evening we have a live online session interactive session where by november 31st we will be revising all the 19 subjects we already finished gynecology obstetrics from today we are starting surgery in the evening 6 o'clock but it is not made free we want you to join we want to pay something and join and take the subscription to be part of under that uh, online mbbs.com subscription you get 3000 video lectures video library daily live online class by november 30th you will finish all 19 subjects revision then you will also get 65 full scale grant tests and discussions every sunday and december 1st to december 30th every day there is a full scale grant test in the morning and evening there is a discussion then almost 1 lakh powerpoint slides of notes for you to do the revision and about 30000 mcqs q scanner topic wise organized for you to do the practice so all this will come for a throwaway price so please call our helpline and uh, buy the subscription and join the evening class every day with the live online streaming class so doctor what is the story of peri central zone let us look into it you should remember so dr reddy please call 9000868356 our helpline to become part of our telegram group zone 1 is periportal zone please don't forget it is the one which is affected first by viral hepatitis the one which is around portal vein zone 1 it is best oxygenated most resistant to circulatory compromise and if you take any ingested toxin like substance abuse like cocaine zone 1 is most affected because it is peri portal whatever you eat goes into gut through the gut portal vein it reaches portal area so peri portal area most affected by the ingested toxins zone 2 is the intermediate zone yellow fever affects it most always carry a 200 pages notebook doctor so that you can make a quick jot of the points so that last woman in the exam hall this kind of things matter a lot zone 3 is the pericentral vein zone which is called central lobula it is least vascularized easily affected by ischemia it has a very high concentration of p450 and the zone most sensitive to metabolic toxins ethanol carbon tetrachloride halothene rifampin acetaminophen zone 3 because it has got p450 and it is also the site of alcoholic hepatitis is what you have to emphatically remember what is wrong about hepatic stellate it is also called itocell itocell punch your answers doctor what is false about hepatic stellate itocell very good very good i'm sure it's a easy question eight of you are absolutely right to clear the bacteria to clear the senescent rbcs that is the function of kupfer cells kupfer cells not ito ito cells are seen in the space of dc ito cells store the vitamin a ito cells are responsible for the hepatic fibrosis 
is what you have to emphatically remember. Very good. Jonas is the highest climber. Abhi is enjoying the crown of glory, staying on the top, followed by Sesha 23, Bem Muhurat and uh, Dr. Y. So doctor, you should be very sure, hepatic stellate cells are responsible for hepatic fibrosis. What is the most lateral structure of femoral triangle? Oh my God. This is very, very important. If you do this question wrong, your anatomy health is very, 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 very poor. Because this is what we all learn in our anatomy first year. Punch, punch, punch. Great. Wonderful. Ten of you are correct. Oh no, it's not femoral artery. It is femoral nerve. You know, how do you reach that navel? Navel. Navel means that belly button, that beautiful, tempting belly button. Typically, you will be starting laterally and going medially. So most lateral is nerve. Please remember. Please remember the very well-known mnemonic. So Abhi is on the top. So you should remember. Lateral to medial. Nerve is most lateral, artery next, then comes the mean, then is the lymphatic which is most medial. That is how you reach that sexy bell button, right? So now, what is wrong about hernia is a very important question. Hernia is one topic, doctor. Without that, there is no question paper. What is wrong about hernia? Do you think direct inguinal hernia is covered by external spermatic fascia or internal spermatic fascia? You think direct or indirect, which is more common in the older people who have got a weak abdominal wall? Oh, no, 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 no. Only three students doing correct. Not acceptable, doctor. What is the most wrong answer? Oh, you thought direct inguinal hernia? Typically, it has to pass through what? Hazelback strand. So, the more elderly you are, the more weaker is your abdominal wall. So, it gives an entry through the Hazelback triangle. That's what you need to remember. So no worries, doctor. We have discussed. We are having about 45 hours of video content in surgery. Okay. So already there in the online MBBS.com video library. But otherwise also every day evening we have a live online interactive class. Where by November 30th we will be finishing all 19 subjects. Already gynops we finished. So we don't, from today onwards, we are not broadcasting it anymore openly because we want students to join, subscribe to the online MBBS.com. It become privately broadcasted. So be part of that. Even by paying a throwaway fee, you are most welcome, right? So become a paid student. So doctor, you should remember, medium, Medial to in epigastric vessels is equal to direct hernia. Lateral to inferior epigastric vessels is indirect hernia. How will you remember? MDs don't lie. MDs don't lie. M is medial. That is direct hernia. Obviously, you don't need to remember the other. The other one will be lateral to inferior epigastric vessel and that would be indirect hernia for the tomorrow's exam you have to be 100 percent sure on this kind of uh, small small uh, mantras the last question for today's evening 15th question let's punch 
loss of wrist flexion flexion of lateral fingers thumb opposition lumbricals of the index and middle fingers affected which nerve injury it is easy question which nerve injury lead to loss of wrist flexion flexion of lateral fingers punch 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 wow very good eight of you are right once more i am telling you doctor median ulna radial musculocutaneous axillary kabhi need to pg hua kya without this without these topics definitely aane wala question hai right so please don't forget afternoon 2 pm we have the physiology quiz so from now onwards every day 10 am 2 pm 10 pm three shows quiz shows in order to inspire you to study throughout the day okay and every day evening at around 6 o'clock we have a live online broadcast session please be part of online mbbs.com video library and uh, roz padenge perseverance ke sath determination ke sath hum we will succeed the upcoming neat pg exam so doctor sesha is having a streak with four correct answers still abhi is on the top position i am so proud of you abhi the last question okay one more last question is there when recurrent branch of the median nerve is injured in superficial laceration of the palm what is going to happen there is one thing that happens in the main median nerve injury that does not happen in the recurrent branch of the median nerve injury so what is that which is not a feature of recurrent branch of the median nerve injury punch oh five of you are absolutely right see the loss of sensation on the thena eminence that is the feature when the main median branch is affected not when the recurrent branch of the median nerve is injured is what you have to remember very good so doctor you should know that there is no loss of sensation if the recurrent branch is affected so finally comes the award gallery bem is boom 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 in the position 3 sesha is in position 2 and now abhi is on the top very good so start a great day in full inspiration because ultimately the life is all about being energetic being happy being knowledgeable being of a use for your fellow men to the patients all your knowledge must be useful clinically to manage the patients to manage the patients more than the knowledge what we need is love affection kindness empathy to the one who is in suffering so we should pray the god that you have given me the opportunity to become an mbbs please give me one more opportunity to become md and i become your hands to serve a poor man who is having the suffering so with that wonderful prayer let us make the great beginning of the studies only with one single dream that we are becoming the toppers in the neat pg have a great day once more at 2 pm we are all meeting with the physiology quiz bye bye